day and pass and pay my respect to their elders, past, present, and future. We also extend our respect to all the gurus around the globe. Um, even though I promised Nandini that I won't say much about her, but I'm sure um, Pashwinath want to know more who is the presenter. So on that note, I just want to say a few things, a few sentences about Nandini without any tears in my eyes. I promise this. So Nandini hails from a musician family. Nandini and I met after Nandini spending few years with Guru Shanti Rajendran in Melbourne. She was 12 at that time. After we both spending few years together, she did her Ranga Pravesham in Chennai back in 2006 in front of Guru Dhanan James and CVC Chandrasekhar Sir. After that, I actually need to thank her parent. I don't know how much she thanks her parents for making her to take that gap year after her VCE and spending the full one year um, with CVC sir and learning anything and everything that she can. I admire Nandini, her willingness to learn anything, but not just learning, this is what I learned from her, De genuinely dedica dedicating the time. As, as we all know, her dance is a treat to all of us. She's in, we also know that she's very excellent in Mridangam and Sangeetam and she's an every guru's dream child. But for me, even though we have a generation gap, she's my best healer of pain or huge motivator of my life. There are things I can say, but I need to say without tear, tears. So I'm going to only say the things that I can say without tears because Nandini means a lot to me. And I know even recently one of the little uh, girl asked me, Nandini is your favorite, right, auntie? I didn't say a word and I just keep it to myself, but all of you are my favorite. Two recent uh, incidents that I wanted to share here as a, showing her dedication. It was pandemic time and she's a frontline worker. I need a child to join a Nati and Adham, um, appreciating the farmers. Mundum Tadagam never give up a resilience, yeah? Within just 24 hours, she has choreographed and been on the stage. It was joy to the, all the audiences seeing her part and Normally I'm the drama queen, but there were a lot of tears. Another example was um, we organized a teacher to take classes during the lockdown. At one night, our time, 8.30, I felt that we are not going to have a lot of us joining the class. I just messaged Nandini and I know she dedicated that night for her assignment, but she just jumped in and joined. That is Nandini. And also, as our Guru Dhananjian says, only through one's mother tongue can one understand the real value of one's culture. Nandini is very fortunate and a fluent, fluent in her mother tongue, Tamil, Tamil, but also in Hindi. Park this aside, Nandini is sorry, currently a pediatric doctor working in Monash Children's Hospital and in her fourth year program with Ch Royal Children's Hospital Melbourne to become a child specialist. I'm going to miss her for next, um, in the first half of the year where she's going to move to um, another state to specialize um, in a child specialist. I think she told me, I, I can't pronounce it, but um, it's to specialize in children's uh, kidney, right? Yes. Pashwanath, thank you for taking this few minutes hearing about Nandini. We, uh, as I told you before, you have serious followers. I know around the globe, you have serious followers from the age of five till 
age of 90. And at our Natyam school as well, you have so many serious followers. I will hand over to Nandini. Thank you for listening. But if I have made any mistakes with my language or anything, please forgive me. I think, uh, Pahashwana Tanna, you can get a sense of the kind of relationship with our guru here. And I have to tell you, every day she has been speaking like this about all of her students. So it's not just me, but this is actually just shows her love for all of us. So we're so lucky. And coming to lucky, we are so, so, so lucky and blessed that you have agreed to do this session for us, Pashwana Tanna. So thank you so much. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce you um, to the rest of the dance school. Not that you need any introduction. Not that you need any introduction at all. Keep it short, please. <laughs> okay. Um, Pashwanath Anna is, uh, is an Indian classical dancer. He's versatile. He's a Natya Mayura awardee. And he has carved out a niche for himself today as one of the most sought after male dancers in India. He trained under Guru Ravindra Sharma in the traditional Mysore style of Bharatanatyam and has further learned under the Kirans in Bangalore and currently um, is also under the guidance of Padma Shri Professor Sudharani Raghupati. He has been the winner of several national awards, including San Sangeet Natak Academy's Bismillah Khan Yuva Puskar in 2017, the Aditya Vikram Birla Kala Kiran Puraskar in 2018, the Ram Gopal Best Male Dancer Award and Best Dancer at Music Academy Chennai in 2018. And he's an impaneled artist of the ICCR, the Indian Council for Cultural Relations and top graded artist of the Bangalore Doordarshan Kendra. Pashunath Anna's prowess in the field of dance is manifold and extensive. Currently, Pashunath Anna choreographs, directs, produces and presents his work at national and international venues under the Punya Dance Company Bangalore banner. He also conducts dance workshops regularly as well as advanced training classes in Bhartanatyam under the banner of his dance school, Upadhyaya School of Dance, also in Bangalore. Along with uh, his wife, Shruti Gopal, and um, along with Aditya PV, they are working on building a Gurukulam, a residential dance school at a village, Chikale, near his home in Belgaon, India, which sounds just wonderful. Punya Abhyasa Shala is one of its kind rehearsal spaces, which is hoping to create awareness about the art form based, um, based on education around northern part of Karnataka um, and southwest Maharashtra and Goa. Um, he has released uh, DVDs, including Shambo, based on Indian classical dance, which facilitates dancers across the globe um, to use the music and choreography. He is created some of the most critically acclaimed and successful productions that have been showcased in the last decades. Varta, Hara, Satgati, Abha, Punya Krishna, to name a few. Um, and just, I know personally, his wonderfully produced videos on YouTube have really been such a, so, such a treat for all of us that uh, haven't been able to see him live because we've been overseas. So we, we thank you for all your contributions to the field of Bharatanatyam and especially for spending this time with us. So, um, uh, before I hand over to Pashwanath Anna, I just wanted to remind everybody of a, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, please, will you all put yourselves on video and on mute, uh, unless you're um, unmuting to speak or ask a question. Um, it would be really great to see everybody, everybody's faces uh, and, you know, to, to um, interact in that way. Um, also, uh, Pashwanath Anna is happy to take questions midway through as well as we go. So if you wanted to just uh, send your questions through to me um, privately on the chat, um, then I can, I can uh, ask on your behalf as well. Um, so uh, I think that's it in terms of introductions. So Parshanath Anna, over to you. And today's uh, topic, and I think he'll introduce it himself, is Abhinaya and Rita. So we're really excited. So over to you, Anna. Namaste everyone and uh, thank you so much Ratika ji, Nandini and all the wonderful students of Bharata Kalanjali Melbourne for having me here today. Um, when Nandini asked me to do this, 
I did not have any subject in my mind. And uh, recently, I think I told her, let me do uh, Abhinaya and Rutta, a combination of Rutta and Abhinaya. So how both complement each other when we do a production or a solo performance or even a group performance. So before that, I just want to brief you what is Nritta and what is Abhinaya. I'm sure all of you know it. Just for the students who are watching live, Nritta is the pure form of dance where adavos are involved, calculations are involved. When it comes to Abhinaya, basically Abhinaya means to express yourself, right? All of you know the shlokam of Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya, Vachikam Sarva Vangmayam, Aharyam Chandrataradi Tamande Satvikam Shivam. So in this shloka only you can find out there are four types of abhinaya or expre expressing ways, the mediums of abhinaya. First one is angika abhinaya. So that is what today's topic is. So what is angika abhinaya? Anga is body. So through our body, we are going to express. See, if somebody is looking down, we need, I know that they're chatting with somebody else on the screen, yeah? And if they're sitting like this, they're bored. If they're sitting like this, they're interested. So your body language tells what your sattvika bhava is, your sthai bhava of your expression is. Am I right? So that is angika abhinaya. Let us come back to the, come back to it later. The second one is vachi kabhinaya, talking. You're all on mute now. So whenever you're going to talk, that is the Vachi Kabinia here. So for dance, it is music, lyrics, or anything. So look at two, all these things are part of Vachi Kabinia. Aharya Bhinaya. Can anybody tell me what is Aharya Bhinaya is? Aharya. It's a costume. We Bharatanatyam dancers do not change costumes according to the characters because we once we go on stage, we play multiple roles, right? For each character, we do not go and change and come unless it is a production, dance production, where we can use Aharya Abhinaya, expressing through costumes, but it is very minimal for Bharatanatya. So mainly we depend on Angi Abhinaya and Vachi Abhinaya and of course, Satvi Abhinaya. That is something artist feels and brings it out with his or her experience. Now, so when, how many of you have learned any Padam Javali where you have a Nayaka or Nayika and they are talking to each other, am I right? Now, that is called as pure Abhinaya where we are expressing with face and little bit of hand movements, which we call it as Natya Dharmi, or the rules of the stage, how your hand should be how many hands we have, how many hands, uh, hand gestures we can use, 28 single hand gestures and 24 double hand gestures. Apart from this, so many things which can enhance Abhinaya. Yes, most important part is the body language. I think it's better I show it to you. For example, I am on stage and my character is a king. So how would I walk? For layman, if I just walk like a king, he might not, he or she might not understand I'm showing a king. So if I walk with broader chest, you know, shoulders going around. So I am somebody who is very important. Am I right? So that is Angika Abhinaya. Now if I put Vachika, for example, Raja Raja Maharaja, is coming in Sanskrit, Kannada, Tamil, whichever language, which is of the local language. If I put it, people will understand. Now, the same, you are on stage, going with that, and you are showing a character who is looking at the king. So what happened here, suddenly? It's the same person, right? Angika Abhinaya, how it is happening here? The body language suddenly shifts to somebody who is putting a flower or doing just namaskaram, his shoulders are little down, he's little humble, he's little out, oh, looking at, oh my God, my king has come. So these are the things which we, we usually do it in Adhika Abhinaya. Now my topic is Abhinaya through Nutta. 
or nrutya through abhinaya both are fine same to me i'll just show you one video here it's part of our production called as abha here the story is uh, of lord rama sita and lakshmana they have just come back from lanka after uh, you know defeating ravana and they have come to ayodhya now what's happening here is and we are doing this in a jati swaram format all of you have learned jati swaram right so there are swarams there is uh, jati it's a pure nrutta composition nrutta is pure dance there is no meaning to the hand movements that you are doing or leg movements you are doing that is nrutta now how we have tried to incorporate the abhinaya here so just as a small example so here what happens once they come back people of ayodhya start talking gossiping about sita that she has stayed with ravana she should be sent back there she should not be allowed to be here in ayodhya she should not be our queen so all those elements a small 5 minutes clips for you to get an idea yes share the screen give me a minute Can you all watch? See? Audible? this we call it as jati right tajjum tadakkadim tadakkajannu tadinginatum tinatum tadakkadinginatum tinatum tadakkadinatum tadinginatum tadinginatum tinatum tadakkadinatum tinatum tadakkadinatum tadinginatum tadakkadinatum 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 observe the shift of the music now all of you part of jati swaram which is in rutta section Thank you. 
then it slowly shifts to the nrutta so this is part of a production so this is part of uh, the ramayana told through the eyes of sita from the arrival of sita rama and lakshmana to ayodhya after the defeating of uh, ravana so here we did all of you know the margam format right how we start from pushpanjali or mallari or ala alaripu then we go to jatiswaram shabdam varnam then we go to uh, any abhinaya composition pure abhinaya composition then we go to tilana so for this production we used margam format to tell the story so all these compositions we used so there was no uh, break of abhinaya or the sthayi bhavam we call it as sthayi bhavam means the underlying emotion that we have so for that jatiswaram what was it you you heard the music it was very very happy to, at the beginning they were all dancing and jati and all happening then vachika abhinaya the music also is very important part of the raga changes very important part of vachika abhinaya where the music changed and also the atmosphere the emotion of the dancers also changed are you all following me yeah all right so this is about the production when we are doing a production now if if you have to take an example of a kruti that you already know uh, any particular kruti that you have learnt in your dance school on devi because this is dasara let us talk a little bit of about devi i think some of us know devi niyatne okay so do you do sancharis in that sancharis are the uh, depicting of different types of stories through the same dancer taking different different characters similar one we had done in our uh, devi kruti which is shri chamundeshwari palayam okay if you want to you can all try to dance with me if you wish to some of you want to dance you can uh, learn the choreography and do this small section how we are uh, using the nrutta or the calculation the kanaks that we have for our jatis and everything to show a particular story all right so so here you all know how she is called as mahishasura martini mahishasura was the greatest demon and uh, devi took the form and she killed her. yes so we are not going into such detailed sanchari we are just showing the small fight between uh, mahishasura and devi these are called as when we do this with nrutta when the when the abhinaya comes along with nrutta these are called as a set sancharis these are set these are set for couple of avartanams you know exactly how many avartanams we do but when we do actual abhinaya we do not set okay we are going to dance for four avartanams and done no the singer will sing according to how dancer is dancing the dancer will dance according to his manodharma singer will sing little bit more dancer will take more but these sections where the nrutta is uh, you know incorporated that particular section will have a particular frame okay so the, here maybe we have two or three uh, sections where we are going to start with showing mahishasura mahisha is actually you know he's a big buffalo he has a face of buffalo so we are going to show him with his big horns you can try with me i'll just show you the choreography if you have any doubts questions you can ask me any time you can write it here if you want to the section that uh, chat section just a moment so here is the arimanti position look at my leg One, two, three, four. Ta 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 ta. Can you all try that much? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ta 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 ta. So remember, you are showing the character here, and not yourself. All right. So you you need to have the body language. 
of Maheshasura and not la 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 la. So you have to show how he was, he was considered to be a hundred feet tall demon. So you have to bring in his character. One, two, three, four. It is not about hitting the leg hard or making noise with your leg, but to control your power, widen your shoulders and bring that crude evil on your face. Okay? Try. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Twice. Fine. The same thing, let us do twice. But one side right, second time we'll do left side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta. One, two, three, four. Ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta. So the song goes like this Shri Chamundeshwari. Kari Shankari. The song is going in flute or veena or other instruments. We are not doing exactly what the words say. Correct? We are showing a different kind of story here. So let me show once. One, two, three, four. Can you all try? One, two, one, two, three, four. Shri. Okay, your horns should not move. It is attached to the head there. You have to move your body. Ah, correct. And not separate. You can bend a little bit down, but keep looking forward. He's searching. Who is there to kill me? Nobody. Yes, I am the Lord of the three universe. That ahankaram should come on his face. Ready, try. One, remember, we are doing rutta. But most importantly, it is abhinaya. Just because we are doing leg movements, there is no break in the abhinaya. Try. One, two, three, four. Shri takita takita tak. Very nice. Now, Mahisha Sura is popularly known as holding a big sword in his right hand and a snake, a big snake, he is holding in his left hand. So, that imagery we can bring it here with again the calculation is. Takita, takita, tam, takita, takita, tam. See here? Takita, takita, tam. For the snake, takita, takita, tam. Takita, takita, tam. Takita, takita, tam. Takita, the tomato dobo, all of you know, right? I'll show you once again. Watch me from the beginning. One, two, three, four. Takita, takita. One, two, three, four. Takita, takita. After this, takita. So just to show his entrance on the stage. See, even in olden days, if you see any other art forms, they will always have a particular Rutta section to introduce a character. Yakshagan, all of you have heard about the regional art form of Karnataka, coastal Karnataka, classical regional art form of coastal Karnataka. There, or even Kathakali, they will have a beautiful rhythmic patterns when they come on stage. All right. So now, let me show you this particular section, what you are learning, which our students have done. Give me a minute, please.
Don't you have any questions, doubts? You can ask me. Okay, I'll just play from the beginning of this composition where the uh, dancers are showing the procession of Devi. This is again the Abhinaya composition where the Nrutta flows through Abhinaya. <laughs> All fair ready? All of you, I hope, got some idea there what's happening. Though it's a Abhinaya composition, though we are doing a Sanchari, though it's a storytelling, still to give it a little bit more, uh, you know, effect to it, we incorporate Drutta. And also, it's very important to know when you're choreographing how much is too much. Because Abhinaya section needs to have that peace, needs to have some sections where there is absolutely no absolutely no calculations that's very very important but to have it's just like you know in abhinaya sections uh, i would consider you all like pickle yes you all like pickle right but you cannot have pickle as your dinner or lunch right yes that's how it should be in the plate little bit enough but it's very important without that it, it falls flat sometimes now, the next section, I want all of you to try at least this much what the, uh, the kids have done, the beginning part. See, can you all try with me? Try. Because so far we have shown only uh, Mahishasura. Mahishasura Mardini also will try to do it. So you'll get a whole picture of what it is done. One, two, one, two, three, four, three. Shankari till there you had the body language of Mahishasura, the demon. Now both Devi and Rakshasa, the demon, are in the same place. Yes? Same battlefield, same situation, but the characters are completely different. Both are angry, but how a demon would be angry, how his body language will be, will be a little different when you're going to show Devi. Yes, she can't be the same as demon. So she has to have a little bit of grace, a little bit of calmness, 
she is powerful she knows it she doesn't have to display it yes all these things you have to have in your mind when you do devi just turn shurta tarata the feel of veera rasa is important here veera rasa veera is a brave so valor so when you when somebody is in the battlefield if you see uh, demons or different characters that we show we have this kind of face yes the crude face but when you show a hero or a devi she has a smile on her face though she is in battlefield she knows what she is going to do she knows about her power she doesn't have to display it so it is ta 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 she is searching where are you ta si ni mahisha sura ma ni shri so the calculation is set to the song So this is nrutta. This is abhinaya through nrutta for me. So da 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 da. So with the rhythm, you can just watch it once. Please practice till here. Okay, it's part of the class. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a look at the question from Bill. Yeah. So, um, uh, somebody asked, is it most appropriate to use Rita and Abhinaya combo only with strong, powerful movements because the Rita can. really enhance that what about in subtle soft um, uh, emotions or abhinaya can nrutta still be incorporated there definitely definitely we can if you see the ashtapadis of uh, odissi dance uh, dance form there there is nrutta in that the way we present ashtapadis the pure form of uh, abhinaya it's completely different when it comes to the shringara oriented Uh, ashtapadis when we do when we see in uh, the odissi art form here yes it definitely enhances when it is a powerful uh, story but there are lot of sections uh, in our productions only or even our solos where we do use abhinaya drutta in abhinaya for example uh, i mean we use it without knowing you know we, there is rhythm there is a small layam which is going back of our mind whenever we are doing abhinaya also for example you are going you are you are on stage and the music is going on tak tak the bitak tak chan no tak tak the bitak tak chan if this is going in this rhythm and if you just showing um say lord rama walking so he has to walk in his in that particular pace only right you can't Walk like in this particular pace. It has to go in that pace. That the the mita ke chhano, the mita ke chhano. This is ruta for me. That the the mita ke chhano. That the that the the mita ke the mita ke chhano. That the that the the mita ke the mita. Ruta does not mean only usages of adavus. Okay. So this ruta, abhinaya, natya, this bifurcations. they are for theoretical purpose but when you do when you are a dancer on stage there is no difference between this wherever it is appropriate auchityam we have to use abhinaya we have to use nrutta 
and how we blend it is up to you so and and just by trying only you can get it okay definitely your teacher will choreograph for you or somebody will choreograph and give you the set uh, uh, composition and you know what to do you will practice it couple of times and do it but you should be part of a creation that will really help you to understand how it is done part of anybody's uh, creation you are, i'm i'm sure you most of you will be attending online workshops rather than uh, understanding sorry learning the composition i think you should understand the process why there is abhinaya section here why there is nrutta and how it, that is enhancing that particular composition so let me take the example of uh, krishna and radha hmm. so krishna is here and radha is here and they are having little bit of argument hmm. in the in rhythmic section for example you have to do hmm. let me take krishna ni begane bar only that's the uh, word words to help you krishna ni begane bar krishna come soon that is the meaning of the line rhythmic sections to make it tighter okay we have a question here what are the mandatory exercises that dancer should do every day and you all know the answers you are just trying to find out if there are easier ways to do it <laughs> no <laughs> you all know the exercises you all know what to do you we don't even have to ask me there are so many apps so many so many people can tell you what to do nowadays online yes you open instagram and you will see people telling you even if you don't ask <laughs> sorry but i would i usually do my leg stretchings regularly stretching my legs is very important especially to avoid knee, knee issues in this particular asana really helps see what happens is in our aramati position we stretch this part but we we do not stretch the back side hence this position where you keep your leg on top of the knee and you just sit here so that there is a stretch you can use the wall or anything these are the stretching exercise that you can do even without dancing even without before the uh, dancing session all right yeah some questions please i'm open for it um i know i have a i have a question another question yes, yeah we are told as we learn dance especially when we learn you know alari pu and chati swaram Uh, or even when we're doing arvos to smile 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 and uh, smiling is the sort of base form of doing you know what that we get taught um is it is it okay to even you know when we do jati swaram so we perform um is that in itself also an abhinaya just the smiling through the dance or should we be trying to incorporate more feeling into um pure nrita items as well as we get more senior potentially or 
it's a different it's a different thing and it and both are acceptable yes thank you nandini for asking this question initially i used to think it is age factor where uh, you know as kids grow old they will smile and dance <clears throat> but it, it is not just the face see with dance with nritta alaripu or jatiswaram whatever we are doing it is not the movements of the hands and legs that is the major difference between indian classical art forms and rest of the world other art forms they are beautiful to watch but here you are emoting through your body with these movements you are emoting something right and that will definitely come through age where you think that with these particular movements you are emoting your joy your happiness and that should come naturally on your face and not artificially where you hit a kid and say smile and smile no that is very temporary and they will smile whenever you are asking them to smile but what you should what we do in our dance class we make them sit before the class and we make them enjoy and be in a space where with all their five senses they feel the joy we make them close their eyes and ask them to think about a person who person or place or food whatever gives them utmost happiness they should look at it and without uh, having any um, you know apprehension they should just smile and listen to the beautiful music think about the beautiful music that which brings them happiness and uh, smell something that gives them happiness it can be anything it can be a food pani puri whatever it is and i'm not, i'm never going to, i never ask them what it is so it is their personal thing they can bring those elements and smile and then dance it's just an exercise but as you said alaripu though it is a nrutta composition it is not just about the movements of your body movement of your legs and hands the ala, word alaripu itself means dedication dedicating yourself as your body and soul and mind to god audience and to yourself also okay it is something that should bring joy to you first so if that it is bringing joy to you that smile will come naturally so smile is very very important part of abhinaya so this prasanna there are two mukharagas in uh, kathakali in uh, kudiyattam they follow prasanna mukharaga that is the base for abhinaya this is not the base of abhinaya no where you are blank blank is not the base of abhinaya it is just like opening a tap you know if the tap is closed you cannot regulate it how much more to express or how less to express it has to be open then only you can regulate it your teacher can tell you you are expressing more or you are expressing less but if you don't express at all it will become become it becomes very very difficult so you have to open up your mind and think alaripu as a kind of a story create a story in your mind where it's in we have that capacity right as human beings we have such a huge advantage of being in a place where we are not you can imagine yourself though you are in your home studio wherever you are you can imagine yourself in a temple maybe or some somewhere beautiful place and look at it and think that thousands of people are watching you you can create that kind of vr for yourself so if you bring that kind of element you don't have to think oh for this particular section how i have to express abhinaya works that way at least for me if you are talking to your friend do you think before talking how am i going to express myself while i am talking to my friend no you don't if somebody ask you how are you do you think about which eyebrow should i raise or how should i carry myself to say i am fine no see that that's because we think dance is too stylized it is stylized but without lokadharmi it will become like mimicry i hope all of you understand the concept natya dharmi and lokadharmi there are different different connotation to it what i understand natya dharmi is the rule of your dance how your hand gesture should be how your natya ramba how 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 you should stand on stage how you should how you should express with your eyebrows and neck movements and all those natya dharmi but if you use only that without bringing the element of you know reality to it lokadharmi how you are 
you can just say come here with your eyes right you don't have to always say come here let us me and you go there everything you don't have to do you can just say let's go enough right that's what we all do we are all indians also after all we we, we use lot of head movements eye movements and everything naturally so we know it we just have to open up little bit that's all and and i actually there's a there's a question in the chat which kind of leads in uh, to what you've said about uh, lokadharmi and what comes naturally to us um ashu has asked when we when we're in a group situation should we be aiming for that synchronicity uh, in our abhina yeah okay i mean i have seen lot of people doing it i do not approve it it's not my style it's not my aesthetics abhinaya is very very individualistic well i mean if it matches then it's there is a problem for me uh, i mean if if everybody has practiced to match their uh, smile if the expression way i mean the feeling should be same of course it it has to be same or there also there can be creativity for example if you are doing a dance on lord shiva and swami nanand nadime in the ulgamella ariyame everybody knows this particular varanam so here when you are doing it three dancers are doing it you can match nrutta and do come here and one person is talking to lord shiva with authority why haven't you come here yet uh, another person please come i've been waiting for you another person is very very angry so those three elements also we can bring in of abhinaya but how you choreograph it it also matters how much is going to be uh, you know um, give the importance to each dancer and not everybody dancing together maybe one person is silent when other person is dancing everybody doing the same abhinaya it can come in certain sections like kattu mettadavu or uh, the pada abhinaya when you are doing but there also it i think it can be different don't look at this is why we say uh, we have this issue of uh, copying the mannerisms nowadays of dancers yes when we idolize somebody we copy their smile or their uh, mannerisms hand movements or just eye movements some these things we copy them and we think that we are dancing like them no uh, it's their style it suits them okay it should you should do how you what suits you okay nobody has taught you how to smile nobody has taught you how to express yourself so please put that in your dance and i think probably it comes with a lot of and many years of introspecting and working on the dance itself and on yourself and reflecting to be able to have that sort of natural ability um actually i'm interested when you mentioned varnam when we have these uh, you know varnam can be so steeped in abhinayam and expression then we have these uh, nritta bits pure nritta bits core ways i want to know i'm interested in your own personal approach do you carry that emotion into the four way no i do not uh, see basically uh, these jatis in varanams were known as tiran tirmanams before there used to be dhalangu takadiku takatadikinatam and two or three uh, avartanams of uh, the tirmanam and that's it nowadays only we have 5 minutes 7 minutes sometimes 10 minutes jatis so it it becomes very difficult for audience to know what was the varanam about so it has become about the showing of about mainrutta skills yes i mean it is a very good part of it but in varanam the jatis used to be like a break like an advertisement you know in between like a commercial you just we i just did one sanchari i just want to go back and uh, do a nritta and go to the next next part but my guru kiran subramanyam sir had done a choreography manini a production where the entire emotion uh, you know passed on to uh, nritta section as well where the naika is very sad and she is disoriented when uh, muruga has not come yet so the last swaram the choreography i really uh, remember where the same rutta section but she is not interested we usually do this thing right? so she is looking somewhere else that 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 somewhere else 
Yeah. It is still Rutta, but the emotion is kind of carrying them. So yes, that, that is an experiment. A lot of people have done it and it has worked out. But I do not know how it will work for four minutes, five minutes, Jatis. If your Jati is for three minutes, it's fine. And uh, if it's a Bhakti or Shringara oriented uh, Varnam, then most of the Jatis work. But if it is something else, where even in uh, Shringara, it is a Viprilabdha Shringara, where the, uh, the Naika is very, very sad. And she is like, oh my God, why am I? He hasn't come back yet. And Dhalangu Takadiku. It, it's kind of is jarring. But if you go through that and you break that character and become yourself as a dancer, after all, you're a dancer, you're showing us, you're portraying a story. So it works fine. Absolutely. Thank you. I've always I've always wondered what everybody's approach to that is. Me too. Me too. Actually, <laughs> I have um a follow-up question from that as well is about maintaining the integrity of the nritta regardless of the emotion that is in it. So for example, if we were to express uh like um like you did with the with the Naika, she's sad and she's uh, forlorn, it's our natural inclination to also sort of maybe not hit our foot as hard and not hold our mudras as sharply let our elbows droop and that sometimes comes naturally when we're showing those kinds of emotions as opposed to more raudram or viram um do you feel strongly about having still holding on to the integrity of that nritta or do you feel that when that emotion is so overcome that these le leniences can be made no um I, I wouldn't call it as a Rutta and Abhinaya. I would uh, segregate them as Natya Dharmi and Loka Dharmi. Based on the emotions, sometimes we keep our hands loose. That is, you know, that is Natya Dharmi. That has to be intact. Natya Dharmi is your base. Natya Dharmi is like the foundation. Without, on top of that, the uh, Abhinaya has to develop. So, yeah, just like what you said, if it's a Varnam and uh, if the Sakhi is sad, her hands will not become sad. She's still this. Her body language might go down, you know, but still her hand movements and how she's carrying herself will still have those Natya Dharmi elements. So, that applies to the Nritta as well. You can experiment with just like how I uh, showed in the swaram parts where disorientation we can show with this or bring in a little bit of uh, element of Abhinaya, a peacock, uh, sorry, a parrot coming and talking to and ta, 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 di, 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 just like how we uh, discussed at the beginning. Those elements can come, definitely. But we should not compromise on the Natya Dharmi. For example, best example is holding the hands uh, with we think expressing means our hands should become weak. No, our body should not become weak. It should be more stronger, actually. In Rutta, because we have practiced Adu so much, we do we will do Rutta very well. But when it comes to Abhinaya, we have to be a little bit more careful with our Natya Dharmi, with the rules of the theta. Thank you, Anna. Another question I've uh, received. Are you okay for me to keep asking you questions? Yes, please. Yes, okay. Um, uh, they, they want to know how you learned to embody Abhinaya using bodily movements and not just through Adivas, like walking at the king or walking fast. How do you, how do you train to convey Tatvika Abhinaya through Angika Abhinaya or, or vice versa? Um, I think for each artist, it's different. For me, my teacher has always made me do different characters in dance, in dance dramas. I think that has worked for me. Uh, Abhinay is, is pretty difficult to teach also and also to learn. It has to come within. And, and uh, I will not say it will take years to learn. Yes, it, it will take years to master it. But it takes just one click to open up. I have seen so many examples of my students. One day, they are pretty bad at Abhinaya. And next day, they come. I was like, are you the same girl? So it just takes a little bit of some spark to open up, you know. So 
for me it worked that way but if you want to practice abhinaya i think you should uh, dwell into more and more compositions and more and more characterizations you might not be able might not be doing it on stage but you have to learn them you have to do them for me it worked where i could do whatever i learned on stage you know whatever i learned in class i could do on stage but it doesn't have to be all the same last two years we did not practice uh, perform anywhere but still we practiced i think that has really transformed us as dancers also it has really helped a lot of our students also who did not perform they who who learned for the sake of learning which is very very important okay nowadays it it has become shallow i'm not saying for everyone for most of the people when you're learning some something you're thinking about what to do with this composition or what to do with this perform where i'm going to perform it yes that is happening or how much i'm going to upload it online so these things are all always back of my mind we should take that out and think sit at one place and think you are a king or you are a krishna or a different characters you don't like mythological characters remove them you think about some being natural any any human being any friend of yours uh, uh, or a motherly character vatsalya be a, be a mother and talk to a baby or be a father or be a friend all these relationships and emotions are universal and have been there forever uh, we are just in dance in bharatanatyam when it comes because of traditional art form we do portray the characters that our ancestors have written about you can write your own thank you so much and i'm so sad that 8 o'clock has come already uh no. oh yeah we've got another <laughs> I've got another question i want to i want people to keep asking questions so we can keep going um oh okay this this question uh, is one they want to know if you have a preference in your dancing style what type of what type of abhinaya do you prefer you 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 prefer you you do you enjoy doing abhinaya through nritta as or you or um just abhinaya as abhinaya solely it it it, it uh, again uh, comes down to uh, auchityam how much is appropriate for that particular uh, composition for that particular uh, situation if i'm uh, doing a abhinaya composition after varanam i want to relax i don't want to do any nrutta so i would just sit at one place and do try to do abhinaya so for that also you have to really really practice and make sure that you are able to catch hold of the attention of the audience with your abhinaya so you should be confident enough i'm still getting there so hopefully i will be able to do abhinaya without the help of nrutta sir but right now i do uh, use nrutta and abhinaya without thinking whether i'm doing nrutta or abhinaya because for me both are same there is no nrutta without abhinaya there is no abhinaya without nrutta. thank you anna so do you would you say for us um as learners and students we should think about think about of nrutta or think about the marriage of these two things when we learn dances we as we even for example like you were saying we're showing sanchari bhavam we should be conscious of it so that we can uh we can make it you know we can maximize it or we can optimize it if we're conscious of it um initially in the initial phases would you say that something that we should look for in compositions as we're dancing look to see where we can incorporate it see uh, the concept of layam applies to both nrutta and abhinaya the concept of talam applies to both nrutta and abhinaya concept of musicality applies to both so this is only for your theory we have made this division alaripu is nrutta composition alaripu uh, jatiswaram is nrutta shabdam is abhinaya but how there are nrutta sections in shabdam varanam is nritya or abhinaya section nritya is a combination of both so when you are practicing i would suggest at the initial level practice abhinaya as abhinaya practice nrutta as nrutta but do not forget these are not just hand and leg movements okay nrutta is just not hand and leg movements think about a particular situation when you are doing nrutta simple adavu dattadavu think you are in a court of a king or court of your favorite uh, character and he he wants to see how good your aramandi is so that emotion will definitely come on your face 
you like it how i am doing it it's it's, it's all for you it's your own creativity it doesn't have to be the same for everyone also so you can create these situations beautiful situation it doesn't have to be what i am telling you i'm sure your creativity is much more, larger than what you think it is so practice with there are many many ways you can practice abhinaya and ruta combined uh, for example uh, you can turn in this particular direction and think about one particular emotion turn this side and do another adavu think about another part, a particular uh, emotion turn this side and this side so not adavu with virarasa tai yum dhatta tai hitta tattu mitta shringara rasa tai yum dhat that they immediately we change shift it just to get an uh, quickly you can change the character or now second level you can go to the character here do not hold up holding the bow and arrow as rama if you want to tai yum virarasa ta and ravana here but the mitta kachanu sudden shift of your body languages so for the practice we can do as many things as possible i just created now so you can create your own own it doesn't have to be the same Okay. Right. So that's a really nice practical way that we can start incorporating that. Um, I'm so sad that it's unfortunately time to end this and this wonderful uh, workshop. Um and now we can't thank you enough for your time. We know how busy you are and how in demand you are, so we're we're very very grateful and very fortunate to have you. So thank you so much for sharing your insights. Right. absolute pleasure thank you so much radhika ji thank you nandini thank you everyone for uh, uh, what, what's the time there right now 7 8 uh, 8 o'clock yeah 8 pm thank you so much for joining me and thank you to risa as well for the, that lovely clip oh thank you <laughs> thank you production clip thanks a lot it means a lot